Hi, I'm Scott. I'm one of the flight nurses from University of Chicago, and I'm also the founder of Pizza Us Medical Education. What we're going to touch on this afternoon is a review of not only inserting the EZIO, but also, more importantly, how to go ahead and use the stabilizer dressing as well. Now, when we take a peek here in our insanely fun pediatric procedures and playtime lab, not only, as you see, do we play with pig's feet, but we also play with hearts, lungs, tracheas, human umbilical cords, mannequins, you name it, we play with it. Anything we can use to make the class more educational so that people can understand what procedures in pathophys really looks like from the inside out. So in our case, when we go ahead and we place a traditional easy I.O., we find the bone, we put one finger on one side and our thumb on the other so we can stabilize the bone. And just as with a child or an adult, once we found the right spot, we just simply drill straight up and down until you can go ahead and feel the lack of resistance. Once it's in, the model is everything you don't want to lose, hold on to. So the only thing we want to remove is the drill, so we hold the needle. We want to keep the needle in the bone, but remove the top part, so we hold the bottom and we unscrew the top. Now, once it's in place, before we hook up our extension tubing, we go ahead and we hook up the stabilizer. And when you look at the stabilizer, it does a really nice job of two things. Number one is making your needle stay put. Number two, as you can imagine, it does a nice job of going ahead and covering up the site as well. And when it comes to the dressing, it says on one side, pull one. On the other side, pull two. Much as with Dr. Seuss, you pull one, pull two, and once it's in place, it stays put. Now the other cool part though, when you play with the stabilizer, is if you notice right here, if I put my finger on the inside, you see how this little plastic piece can pop up and down. And that's important when we go ahead and we place it onto the site. So when we look here, the idea being that once it's in place, I pull one, pull two, now it's in the right place. But What's important is that if we have some swelling of the skin, let's say in a burn or a trauma situation, what can happen is right here, this part right here can raise up or go down a little bit. And that's important because as it goes ahead and it can rise up or go down, what happens is if we have a little bit of swelling, it actually allows the dressing to lift up, but it actually doesn't put pressure on the needle, meaning it's not going to remove from the bone. Now, once it's in place, then we just simply screw on our extension tube. We can go ahead, much as they teach in the books, you can hook your syringe up and you can try to aspirate bone marrow back. And sometimes you get bone marrow and sometimes you don't. But you can still be in the right spot even if you don't get bone marrow back. Now, once it's actually in place, then we go ahead and we want to give our saline flush. And our saline flush, the reason being is that way we can go ahead and clear the stuff out of the way before we give our medications. But when it comes to the push, it's best described as pushing an amp of D50 through a 24 gauge IV. And if you've ever tried to do that, you know the amount of resistance that you're going to get. So in our case, when we go ahead and we slowly push, I'm able to give fluids with no worries whatsoever. But many people, the first time they go ahead and try to do this, find that it's not nearly as easy as the book would make it sound to go ahead and push fluids into the space. Now, in our case, once we've got it in, then we also need to go ahead and take it out. So to do that, as you can imagine, we unscrew our extension tubing, we take our dressing, and we clear it out of the way. Okay, and once it's out of the way, then we go ahead and we take our syringe, much as with an oxygen bottle, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Once we've got our dressing completely clear and we've got our syringe onto here, remember that the needle twisted in, so therefore we twist it out. So once it's in place, we're gonna go ahead and hold the leg or the arm with one hand while we go ahead and we twist with the other. And as you do that, you'll find that with a little bit of force and a little bit of twist, your needle pops out. 